I've bought into the idea for a long time that I'm just not an athletic person, that I'm not strong enough to do this. You have curves, you're not a runner. I can't do a marathon at my size or my body type. I never called myself a runner. Early 20s to early 30s is like prime goal for like marathon runners or whatever. Okay, so we missed that mark. We're still here and we're doing it. So, count it up, bitch. Yeah, we decided to step out on faith, step out on sisterhood, and train for a marathon. I'm in pink. Look at it's way more than just a running crew. It is community like I've never been in before. We've had some negative thoughts telling us that we are not a runner, we can't do this, it's too hard, our bodies don't do this. When you look at the faces of the people who are finishing a marathon, there's something there. It's like they've been to a place that I've never been. I want to go there. It's always been ingrained in me from a little girl. Like, if you're not sprinting, you're not a runner. You have breasts, you're not a runner. Like. No, not everyone has the genetic DNA that makes them like slender. Like some of us are curvy and we can still get out there and run. And we can run on a speed day. We can pull out a 958 if we want to. I know I'm terrified every time I step outside the door for a run. I don't care if it's a four mile run or an 18 mile run. Although today, I just might piss my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would just be par for the course today. I just turned 50. I was never an athletic person at all growing up. Even in sharing the idea that I might do this marathon, a couple of folks were like, oh, I don't think you should do that. You're going to get injured. OK, who's next? If anything, I think that just made me want to try to do it more. I need to keep moving because when I stop, it just hurts too bad. I think I cried every single morning leaving. The long run days are certainly the hardest. We're upping it from three times a week to four or five or six. We just need one mile. We're at 17 right now. We just need one mile. That's one mile. Yeah, let's just say yes. First long run. <laughs> Did you see the clip? <laughs> oh gosh, okay, I'm so sorry. I don't want to do it without her. I can't. So we were running on the hottest day of the year. My fucking feet are hurting me. What the fuck is this shit? We're gonna be out there with each other, even if it hurts, even if it's hard. And we're just proving to ourselves, we can do it. We can do hard shit, and fuck you if you count us out. We did it. We did it. Girl, you came out like the people in the water in Alabama, girl. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> that was you. When I first started trail running, I was running with predominantly white men. I thought to myself, wouldn't this be great if there were black women who were running out here with me? I never thought that that would have been possible in Charlottesville. I was suicidal the night before I came out to Prolific the first time. <clears throat> My mom passed away in 2007. After she passed, everything that I made, and I made a lot, was just coping with that loss. That piece is probably the most difficult time of my life. The thing coming out of his mouth is depression. He's sort of being choked by the snake, but the snake also represents change and growth. And it's me. That was also a self-portrait. 
No matter how low you get, there's a way out. For me, it was finding community and it just so happened to be a running community. Just by virtue of being women of color, none of us have a lot of visible models for marathon runners who look like us or who come from our backgrounds. I'm proud to be part of the way that this group is doing it. I think I'm the youngest. She's like, everybody looks out for me. Like a bunch of aunties around me at once. They started following me on Instagram, which was really weird. And so they really be looking out for me. It's gonna be hard. I know it's gonna be really hard. The long runs every weekend remind us how hard it's really gonna be. I think it's cool that we have this humbling moment every weekend where it's like, oh, right. It's 26. <laughs> they talk about hitting those mental walls. Anything over 10, it's like, ooh, it's getting shaky. Initially afterwards, like, I'm never doing that again. That sucked. Why did I do that to my body? This is probably the hardest thing I've ever done, especially training in Charlottesville. The hills are crazy. I want to look back and see the growth emotionally, physically, mentally, and really hold space for that for myself. We're standing together. We're doing this together. It's not going to beat me. I'm going to beat it. Both sides of my brain playing with each other. Like, yes, we're excited, and oh shit. We're kind of nervous. We, we, we're kind of a little nervous. <laughs> Start line, felt ready. It was just that feeling of like, okay, let's just do this now. Feeling a lot of nerves and a lot of fear. A lot of um, excitement and adrenaline going through. <laughs> Start line, I was like, oh shit, we're here. It's, it's here. <laughs> Starting out, it felt good being in the pack. It felt good running. We had a plan of like 13 minute pace, slow and steady. Like all these people that are gonna shoot out, like we're not gonna run out fast. We're gonna keep it slow and steady. And so we were feeling good. We were feeling really good. And then I started crying. <laughs> I was hyper-focused on not meeting the time goal. Having to like confront perfectionism. Things are starting to cramp. I've been eating like gummy candy fuel shit for like hours at this point. Just everything like over it, <laughs> just physically over it. In the moment it's so painful and you're even thinking I'm never doing this again. Most of my family has passed. When we started, I pictured everybody that I could think of being behind me. I ran it for them, I ran it for me, and I feel like they were with me the whole time. So I kind of feel like I wasn't alone in the race. When I got to mile 21, there was a wall that was hit. Where is the music? Where is the DJ? All these quiet moments. I don't want to be in my head anymore. This fucking sucks. It didn't get truly hard, I think, until about mile 22. There were moments where I'm seeing other people, and we're all here. <laughs> we're all suffering, but we're doing it. It was just exhaustion, pure pain. Very quickly after that, all you remember is the good things. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It's a marathoner. It's a marathoner right here, y'all. Yes. Marathoner. Same right here. When I crossed the line, I forgot I was going to get a medal. Congratulations. And then that lady was like giving it to me, and I just, I just, I just lost it.
as soon as I cross. I felt complete. Now, like, having women, like, help me, carry me, be behind me, be in front of me, be beside me through this, it, like, means a lot. I hope that other women like us who don't feel like they are runners feel like they can do something that they felt like they couldn't do before. Crossing the finish line was just, like, a massive sense of relief. I guess I have learned to keep my emotions tucked away. One of the race officials at the finish line asking, like, do you need a medic? I was like, no? I mean... No, she's, she's, oh. she was finished a marathon. She's really proud. <laughs> Nobody was saying anything to me about Juanica, so I could tell something was off with that, and then there's a point at which you kind of make a big loop, and so you're passing people that are going, and I saw Juanica, and I knew how much she still had to get through. It was another wall hit. Like there were trucks that were like already started to pack up stuff. And the race people started breaking everything down. I just wanted Juanica to get her medal. And the time is not gonna count. They're gonna take up all the timer thing in the jiggy. It was like, you've done most of the race by now. It truly is just about you putting one foot in front of the other. Just keep moving. And then when I hit the corner and I saw like, prolific still really was there. It just was like, oh my God, like they didn't leave me. I'm not here by myself. Whatever was left just kicked in. And I remember actually running, running. And it wasn't like run walking anymore. I was running. Come on, Juan Juan, like the finish line is right there. They held it for you, just go. I just wanted her to feel all that energy. I wanted to channel it right into her tired legs. She was worn out. She was ready for it to be done. I was so proud of her because she's very hard on herself. And then I got to the finish line and I was like, I, I did it, I did it. Kenny came over and he was like, your time, your time, you got your time. And I was like, I have documented time. Like, it is documented. I did a marathon. And so it was like, in my head, it was like, yes, I am a marathon now. We said man. Just to see that level of support for someone who's not the stereotypical runner, the one that's marketed and advertised, be a BIPOC woman, surrounded by brothers and sisters who support her with love. It was, it was everything. It was the boost that I needed. We place limits on ourselves. It's so easy to say, oh no, that I can never do that. But it's also really easy to say, I'm gonna try. It's even more gratifying when you do it with a community of people. There's some beautiful women, like powerful, strong women. And I get to call them my sister. That's why I need to run with every foot that lands on the pavement. It's a reminder that I can do whatever the fuck I want to do if I put the energy behind it. But I say count it up, count it up.